and that is scary and that's what we want to avoid. So, hey guys, hey, welcome to another dog vlog and in today's video, I am going to share my top 10 mistakes when it comes to crate training. Oh guys, and if you are new here, don't forget to click that ooh, subscribe button. Help us on our mission to save all the damn dogs. All right, let's jump into this video, right? Meow. These are in no particular order, but the first crate training mistake that we'll talk about is putting the crate in an isolated area. That is something that you don't want to do for most dogs when they're learning to be crate trained. And that's because if you put the crate in the garage or a back bedroom that nobody goes into while they're learning how to be comfortable alone in a crate, it can be a recipe for disaster. So what I recommend and what has worked best for my dogs, my foster dogs, is starting with the crate in a more public area where fam your family spends time. Whether that be the dining room, which is where we are now, living room or bedroom at nighttime. And it's okay to move the crate from the living room during the day to your bedroom at night. The next crate training mistake is only practicing crate training when you're gone. This is something that when you're home, let's say you're watching TV, or you're doing the dishes in the kitchen, that you should be practicing with your dog. This really helps desensitize them and teach them that the crate doesn't always mean that mom and dad are leaving and the crate isn't so scary after all. This next mistake may just be specific to my dude here, Finnegan. Uh, and this is actually a mistake that I made and we have since corrected. This next mistake is letting your dog out of the crate just because you open the door. Let me show you what I mean. So if I have just come home from work and Finnegan is in his crate, he's excited to see me, I'm excited to see him, what I don't want to do is just open the crate and let him zoom out like a crazy monkey maniac, which is what Finn used to do. So what I do is, okay, wait. Good boy, Addis. Addis. <laughs> so you'll see, I did not give him a command to make him sit down or lay down, but I calmly waited once I opened the crate door for him to offer a down, which is for most dogs, a way of them just calming down a little bit. Once he did that, I rewarded him, and then I gave him his release command, which for him is at ease. And so what that teaches him is just because the crate door is open doesn't mean you bolt out, and that really helps lower their excitement and anxiety when they first get out of their crate and when you first come home. So this next mistake is something that I have struggled with and candidly still do a little bit. So I totally get it if you do too and it's something we can work on together. But that mistake is getting overly excited when you let your dog out of his or her crate. You open the door and you, oh, I'm so excited, yeah! No, we don't wanna do that, <laughs> case in point. We don't want our dogs to associate getting out of the crate as a fun, exciting thing because then they could potentially associate being in the crate as a sad and not exciting thing. And that's not what we want. So you be calm, help your dog be calm. Everyone will <sighs> ah, namaste. <laughs> If you have a dog that cries or screams a lot in the crate and you're sitting down to do a training session with your dog, just like we are with here with Finnegan, one mistake I see a lot of people do is wait too long to give them a reward for being quiet. And I have full series of trait training videos linked right here and down below. So you guys can go watch my step-by-step -step crate training tips. But the key here is if they are quiet, that's when you want to reward. Don't wait 10 seconds or five seconds. As soon as you hear them quiet, when you're sitting here working with them, you reward. Yes, good boy. There you go. I just have some freeze-dried green, green lamb tripe here for him. Oftentimes, you guys will send me videos on Instagram or Facebook, which if you're not following me there, just search my name, Rachel Fasaro, and let's connect. Uh, but you'll send me videos of your dogs in a crate, and your dog will be crying and barking, and you'll say, Rachel, what do I do? But what I'll see in that video is for one or two or three seconds, your dog will actually, in fact, stop crying and stop barking. And I just wanna scream through the camera and say, that's when you reward it may they may only be quiet and stop barking for a couple seconds at a time and in the beginning that's okay that's when you reward it could be with a verbal it could be like a verbal praise it could be a toy it could be treats it could be a mixture of those but that is when you reward them when they're quiet 
and calm. And eventually they'll learn, oh, I can sit here and scream and bark and cry and nothing happens, I'm ignored. Or when I'm quiet, I keep getting my favorite treat. When I'm quiet, mom pays attention to me. When I'm quiet, that's when she releases me from the crate. Hmm, maybe I should be quiet. Would you guys believe me if I told you that Finn was one of the hardest dogs I had when it came to crate training? Look at him now, he's offering to go in the crate, he's calm, no big deal, he's choosing to go in and out throughout this video, and that is just a testament to what time and patience can do. And one thing that really helped him, and it's a mistake that I see a lot of people do, is when you first start with crate training, Finnegan, can you go in the crate? Good boy. A lot of people will do this as step one, and then one second later do this. Good boy. What happens is when you shut the door on the dog in the very beginning of their crate training stage, they're learning, okay, as soon as I walk in that crate, the door is shut behind me, and that is scary, and that's what we want to avoid. So when you're first starting with crate training, again, I talk about this in my crate training videos linked down below, I work with the crate door open. And you guys know that the way that I got Finn to love being in his crate is I made it Disneyland. I made the crate his happy place. Same thing with Bentley. Hi, Ben. I feed them their meals in their crate. I give them their treats in their crate, their raw meaty bones, which is a great place to feed in the crate because they can get a little bit messy. So it's a great place to feed them. It's kind of two birds with one stone. I make it an exciting environment and eventually dogs will learn that this is a really good place to be and I'm safe and secure. A big no-no when it comes to crate training is using the crate as a place of punishment. Your dog goes potty on the carpet or they snatch some bread off the couch counter and you're frustrated and you're irritated and so you want to put them in their crate, lock them in there so you can just put them out of sight for a while and punish them. Here's the thing, if you use their crate as a place of punishment, how could you ever expect them to love their crate as a place of feeling safe and secure? And that leads me to my next crate training mistake which is please, 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 please try to avoid losing your patience. Even if you're not verbally saying anything to your dog negative, if you're feeling stressed you're, during a crate training session, your dog is gonna sense that stress. Now, the next crate training mistake is don't go too fast, don't rush the process. This is a slow and progressive training tool that's gonna take time to master for both you and your dog. And if you need more tips on specifically what to do in step-by-step -step processes, I have videos linked up here and down below. When this is over, just go explore, dig in, and send me questions on Instagram and Facebook. A quick bonus tip, one more mistake that I recommend you avoid, and that is leaving more than one dog in a single crate. It's really, even if they get along, it's really just a matter of safety. They could be playing and having fun and somebody could get caught in something and it's just, it's not worth the risk. And here, you know what? Here's another bonus tip of a thing to avoid. I do not recommend leaving a collar or bandana or any article of clothing or fabric on your dog if you're gonna leave them in a crate unattended, even if they're by themselves. Uh, it could just be a safety issue again that I would avoid. I want you guys to comment below. What questions do you have when it comes to crate training? Guess what? I'm gonna go in the comment section and I'm gonna answer them for you. And you know what else? We have the most incredible and fast, fantastic pet parent community here. They're gonna, everybody in the comment section is gonna help you as well. So if you're watching this video and you still just have questions and concerns about crate training or you're feeling overwhelmed, jump on down to the comment section. You're gonna see that it's a positive, educational, informative, and just amazing place for you guys to connect and for me to connect with you guys. And don't forget to click that subscribe button because we are on a mission to, <laughs> on a mission to save all the damn dogs. All right guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you more than you could ever know. And I hope you have a beautiful day.